Just like every spring since 1948, groundskeepers are carefully grooming this special Florida diamond, which has hosted generations of baseball greats. The ballpark's history is so revered, and it is so intimately associated with its coveted annual visitor, it's fondly known as Dodger Town. The unique facility in Vero Beach, Florida, with its throwback feel and fan-friendly proximity to the players, has served as the Dodgers' spring training home since the team was based in Brooklyn. I mean, where can a, a fan sit three feet behind a major league player, you know, and, and kind of whisper in his ear, hey, how about an autograph? Nowhere else but here. Yes, in these open dugouts, here's where Oral Hirschheiser sat, as did Sandy Koufax before him. So did all the other Dodger stars dating back to Duke Snyder and the legendary Jackie Robinson. It's just, it's so chock full of tradition and the field is basically the, the way it was when Roy Campanella, Jackie Robinson, Don Sutton, you know, all of these guys when they played here. But this spring is not like the previous 61, not even close. And there's a real threat that it may never be again. As the Red Sox and other big league teams all around Florida play their exhibition games, at Dodger Town, the concourses and concession stands are deserted, and the Hall of Fame walk arches are not embracing a single fan. That's because the Dodgers have cleaned out their lockers, wrapped up their precious memories, and officially decamped to a newer, spiffier, and much closer facility in Glendale, Arizona. With the Dodgers now playing their first home games in the Cactus League at their $80 million complex, the franchise is also contributing to locking out Vero Beach and its legion of annual visitors from the city's Cherry Spring training tradition. The public has a little perception of feeling uh, jilted by the Dodgers because we, we did put out a lot of money to buy this. We expected that that would be enough to keep the Dodgers here for a long time. For Vero Beach, which raised $17 million to buy Dodger Town a few years ago, that was a painful break with its storied baseball history. But O'Brien refused to get bogged down by sentimentality, and city officials set a course to land another big league tenant, like the Orioles. They are seeking an upgrade from their Fort Lauderdale home and were in talks with the city of Sarasota as well, but negotiations with Vero Beach were fruitless and acrimonious. They came in as the big owner trying to dictate the terms to little guys, and that just set everybody off on the wrong foot. And I think it's important to see that after we voted to, res to rescind the oral offer that Sarasota voted the same thing two days later. And I think some of these teams have to realize these are tough economic times. In explaining their position, the Orioles told the AP, quote, we wouldn't be doing ourselves or our fans any favors if we didn't look at all the possibilities. The trouble for the city and surrounding Indian River County began in 1997, when the O'Malley's, whose ownership dated back to 1944, sold the Dodgers to the Fox Group. Three years later in 2000, Fox said it no longer wanted to own Holman Stadium and the rest of the sprawling facility, which even includes residences for the players. And according to county officials, Fox wanted Vero Beach to buy it as a condition to keep the Dodgers put. So Indian River County, backed by a taxpayer bond issue, ponied up $10 million and another $7 million for improvements. The new arrangement worked for a few years, but in 2007, the Dodgers, admitting that their long-term future would not be 2,500 miles from Los Angeles, informed Vero Beach that their long, glorious run in the Florida sun would end starting this spring. Yet while the Dodgers are done with Vero Beach, Vero Beach is not done with baseball. We could have made um, the owners of the Dodgers tear this facility down. It would have become a, a industrial zoned area and they would have had to purchase it for full price when they left. But the community, we felt it was very important to keep a baseball facility and here. The first option was to replace the Dodgers with another major league team. Aside from the Orioles, only the Red Sox, based in Fort Myers, were looking to relocate within Florida, but they quickly passed on Cozy Holman Stadium since it could not accommodate the large Bo Sox fan base. How about the other 14 Grapefruit League teams? County Commissioner O'Brien says that avenue was explored and four teams liked the quaint facility, but it would simply be too costly for any team to break its current lease. Is a major league team the number one option? You know, in my mind, not 100% not, not number one. I like the idea of year-round venue and promoting baseball from all different levels. I think it'll be a better economic benefit. It's not quite as sexy as saying a major league team, 
Um, at the same time, I think there'll be a more positive working relationship, particularly in today's day and age. Until that day comes, the county says it's spending $100,000 a month to keep the grounds in peak condition to lure a baseball partner which wants to play immediately. We want to keep the grounds to the point where if the people above us said we're ready to go tomorrow, that we would be ready to go tomorrow. Um, the fields basically are all edged, they're all groomed on the property and pretty much we can pull the trigger in a couple days. A facility catering to several tenants appears to be the most likely short-term scenario for Vero Beach. That's because no major league team will be free from its current lease until 2017 at the earliest when seven teams are back in play. So where does this leave Vero Beach and those who've tended to the Dodgers all these years? I actually grew up on this field. I mean, I came right out of high school and, and have been grooming this field for 27 years in one way or the other. From the members of the grounds crew to those tied to the local economy, it's hard to say what's next for Vero Beach. But given Florida's battered economic climate, it could very well be hard times. Dave Lebeski, The Associated Press.